In the 17th century, Central Europe was dominated by a multitude of small states, united in the Holy Roman Empire. However, after the establishment of Protestantism, things began to change. Here's Ferdinand himself to talk to you about the issues concerning the Austrian Empire. I am here tonight with a fine guest, Ferdinand II of Bohemia. Ferdinand, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Ferdinand II. I am Holy Roman Emperor, King of Bohemia, and a proud Habsburg. So, what are your goals as King of Bohemia? As King of Bohemia, I want to unite my kingdom under a single ruler and religion, Catholicism. So, in uniting your empire, what made you declare war on your own people? Those Bohemian heathens dared to rise in open revolt against me. They also threw my officials out of a window, but they were saved by angels, so it's okay. You later got promoted as the Holy Roman Emperor. I did become Holy Roman Emperor after my dear friend Matthias II passed away. Well, it's one step closer for my goal of, of crushing those godless heathens called Protestants. So I heard you were engaged in quite a long conflict. I believe it's called the Thirty Years' War? Yes, it is called the Thirty Years' War. And for me, it was just a continuation of the destruction of those Bohemian bastards. Their friends in the north, the Danes, threw a bit of a hissy fit and they got destroyed by my Catholic army. The Swedes decided also it was a good idea to go and fight the Holy Roman Empire, which was actually a bad idea for them because they got destroyed as well. It wasn't until France joined the war that I had a bit of a, a slight, very slight problem. So to top it off, in what way did your reign influence absolutism in co your country, Austria? I claimed so very close to achieving absolutism in Austria, but those French came and ruined everything. And they're Catholic as well! This doesn't make any sense. I am now joined by Ferdinand III, the successor to Ferdinand II. So, Ferdinand III, what was the state of your empire after your dad passed away? Well, to be short, it was pretty bad. France was <laughs> still destroying us in the Thirty Years' War, and we were suffering all kinds of problems from that. What did it take to end the Thirty Years' War? Well, we had to sign the Treaty of Westphalia, which was a terrible treaty for the Holy Roman Empire. What are your thoughts on the Peace of Westphalia? Well, it was a terrible treaty for the, all of the Holy Roman Empire. Maybe if my dear father hadn't screwed up completely during the Thirty Years' War, I could have kept some powers to the Holy Roman Empire. What's more, those damn Protestant heathens kept their rights to worship under the Peace of Westphalia, which was just terrible for all of the Holy Roman Empire. I am joined now by Charles VI, Holy Roman Emperor, 50 years following the death of Ferdinand III. So, Charles, how do you feel about religious tolerance? It is terrible. We should expel all of the Protestants in our country, and we should kill all of them outside of it. Expel them all! What wars were you involved in, and what were their outcomes? The, my first involvement in war came when I joined the War of Spanish Succession, when I attempted to take the Spanish throne. I was about to achieve this when the British decided to sabotage me. At, at least in the Treaty of Utrecht, I got some of the lands previously belonging to Spain, such as Sardinia and the Netherlands, and a lot of the Duchy of Milan. Anything else? Yes, there are plenty more wars to discuss. For example, in the Austro-Turkish War, I was able to completely control Serbia. And in some of the wars, I had to make a few tactical retreats, but overall, my wars were entirely successful. How did you deal with the lack of male heirs? So I passed the Pragmatic Sanction of 1713, which ensured the rule of Hagsburg of Austria, even if it meant a woman had to rule. In this case, Maria Theresa became queen, and she united Austria and Hungary. What was the outcome of this year? How did the nations respond? Well, there was some bribery involved. I did give some of my territories to Great Britain, Spain, and France. But overall, they kind of, they were good with it in 1728, and they officially declared that they were okay with it in 1738 in the Treaty of Vienna. What were some of your greatest achievements, Emperor of Austria? Austria reached the peak of, it, of the territorial expansion under my rule. With the treaties of Utrecht and the Hague, it ended the wars of Spanish succession and the Quadruple Alliance, respectively. Under my reign, Austria has flourished and gained numerous amounts of land. I am now with Maria Theresa, the first female ruler of Austria. What was the condition of your country after you inherited it? Well, I do love my dear father, Charles. He didn't really leave the country in great financial situation when I came to the throne. And his
his advisors were terrible in helping me get our financial situation back in place. So really, the country is kind of a mess. Also, while my father was alive, all the countries seemed to be fine with the pragmatic sanction, but as soon as I actually came into the throne, Prussia tried to invade my land, which was not cool. How does it feel to be the first female Austrian ruler? Well, to be honest, it was difficult initially. There was a lot of pushback from other countries. In particular, Prussia, they invaded my land. And uh, initially, I like, stood my ground, I fought hard, but ultimately, France backed out of our alliance, and I had no option but to enter negotiations with Prussia. How about the Seven Years' War? What happened there? Well, there were lots of parties involved. Uh, essentially, France came out the most harmed, and we came out really not harmed at all. But the real thing that came out of this war was that I realized just how much reform our country needed, militarily and governmentally, and I also married off my children to extend the Austrian power. What changes did you make to your country? Well, uh, one thing that you should all know is that I am not religiously tolerant, just like my predecessors. I just had to expel the Jews and the Protestants because they were disrupting the purity in our nation. So that was one change I made religiously. What about humanitarian reforms? I passed the Codex Thesaurus, which is a document that compiles all the humanitarian and civil rights changes that have been made, and it simplifies it into one area. Finally, what about your government and military? Well, for the military, I uh, created an army of 108,000 men, and this was all paid for by taxes. And for the government, I brought in a lot more taxes and doubled state revenue, which took us out of bankruptcy and into a more financially stable state. In Austria, absolutism had great success. After the reign of Maria Theresa, Austria had a strong, centralized nobility supported by a large army, with a palace that rivaled Versailles. Despite several shortcomings, Austrian absolutism brought forth an era of economic prosperity, allowing Austria to rival other countries such as France.